Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck tomorrow. All the fighters have faced off. Somebody they will talk. If Junior doesn't want to run, let's just say he doesn't want to run. Somebody the party will speak to in closed doors, I promise you, is Dana White. Oh. And while Dana White would laugh at this right, never even bring me up to, somebody will talk with him. And yeah, it could be very. You think it happens? Here's what I think. Well, I get the port. I assure you that somebody will speak to Dana about this. I assure you if they do that now, it will be completely blown off. However, Dana did say, and this was in 2016, that if Trump asked him to be chief of staff, he would leave the UFC and go be chief of staff. Dana has never said anything in the history of him learning how to speak that is anything against the UFC. And he said, I would leave the UFC to be his chief of staff. I, I respect the president so much. I would do this for Biden. I would do it if a president called on me, I would serve. And I'm just sharing with you that th there is going to be a day when Dana will change his mind, and Dana White would win, by the way. He would win the press. He'll deport me. But to hear the garden chant overrated, what are you thinking in that moment? You know, it was it was funny um, to hear the chants. Uh, it almost just made me laugh because the crowd and the people that are that are doing that. I'm looking at. I'll just ex I'll, I'll explain it this way: when you get disrespected by people that in my opinion, have no idea what they're talking about. It's almost a compliment. And uh, so, you know, to be, to feel that from the crowd, it almost just made me laugh because it's like somebody insulting you who has no idea what's going on. So I'm like, all right, well, it's just almost a compliment to me because <laughs> I feel like I controlled the fight. I did everything I needed to do. And if I have a bunch of idiot drunk fans that, they don't like the way it's going, I think that that's actually probably a good thing. Big hoopla, John. The first guy he says hello to is who, Kenny? Who's he go over to? As Joe Rogan's security <laughs> detail, which is me. Him reuniting with Joe Rogan after the election was going Crazy. to be a big moment because Joe Rogan, if you don't know, I think was pivotal if well, not instrumental 100 in 100 percent john re-elected right so somebody asked me like hey john you know that uh that reaction was for joe and not you and it's like <laughs> yes sebastian i understand that uh 47's reaction wow. was not for me and i can't tell you how many executives walk right the past me or celebrities right this dude stops and shakes my hand again out of respect so take that for what it's worth Power Slap was literally built 
on social media and, and on the internet. And, uh, you know, when you, when you think about it, it, it hasn't even been two full years yet, right? And we have over 20 million followers on Power Slap, right? 9.6 billion views in less than two years, 22 months. Um, you know, when we go up against any of the sports out there, including the Super Bowl, we beat them on social media. And, and just for the record, uh, our rights are up right now too. Power Slap's rights are up in January. So we'll be out looking to, uh, to do new deals with, with, with Power Slap too. A Dublin jury delivered a guilty verdict on Friday, finding that Conor McGregor sexually assaulted Nikita Hand in December 2018. Hand had filed a civil suit in early 2021, alleging that Conor and Conor's friend James Lawrence engaged in sexual acts with her without her consent. After deliberating for just over six hours, the jury awarded Hand approximately 250,000 euros in damages. The jury determined that Lawrence did not assault Hand. However, during the trial, Hand's attorney argued that McGregor and Lawrence collaborated to shift the blame onto Lawrence rather than McGregor. Hand sought various damages, general, special, aggravated, and punitive, due to the incident and her inability to work stemming from mental health issues. Court documents revealed she initially sought $1.79 to $2.13 million in damages. Connor admitted under oath during the trial that he had sexual relations with Hand during the incident, but maintained it was consensual. Connor and his legal team were present for the verdict, along with his wife, Dee Devlin, with whom he shares four children. Do you have a reaction to the woman? Do you have an apology to the woman at the centre of this? I'm partly the role model the young fans. What do you have to say about Start off by saying, saying I'm, I'm overwhelmed and touched by the support I have received from everybody. First, I want to thank the Coleman legal team and my three barristers, John Gordon, Ray Boland and Sean. They have been amazing from start to finish. I want to thank Mr. Justice Alexander Owens, the jury, all the witnesses. I want to thank the doctors, nurses and everyone at the Sexual Assault Treatment Unit and the Rotunda Hospital for looking after me, especially my own Dr. Frank Clark. I want to thank the Rape Crisis Centre, especially Kleena, who has been by my side throughout this entire period. I want to thank all the guards and the ambulance crew. I want to thank all the women and men out there who have supported me throughout this trial. For every person who, who reached out to me, a card, a letter, email, everything, it hasn't gone unnoticed. Thank you, I really appreciate it so much. I want, I want to thank my partner, Gary, who has been so supportive for the last four years and has held my hand throughout this trial every and every day and every other day. I want to thank my mom and all my family and friends. Lastly, I want to thank my daughter Freya, who I'm most grateful for. She has given me so much strength and courage over the last six years throughout this nightmare to keep on pushing forward for justice. I want to show Freya and every other girl and boy that you can stand up for yourself. If something happens to you, no matter who the person is, and justice will be served. To all the victims of sexual assault, I hope my story is a reminder that no matter how afraid you might be, speak up, you have a voice, and keep on fighting for justice. I know this has impacted not only my, my life, my daughters, my family and friends tremendously, and it's, and it's something that will I'll never forget for the rest of my life. But now that justice has been served, I can now try and move on and look forward to the future with my family and friends and daughter. Nikita, what has the last two weeks been like? Breaking news, Conor McGregor has just been civilly found liable for rape. So the story dates back to 2018 with allegations that he sexually assaulted a woman in a Dublin hotel room. Today, a jury gave their verdict and he was found civilly liable and he was ordered to pay approximately a quarter million US dollars to his victim. So just really quickly what this means, leaving aside any potential appeals, this means he's a civilly convicted rapist. Now, this was not a criminal trial. He wasn't found guilty. He's not going to be punished. The fallout for Connor is that he has to pay this money. And the further fallout is 
just in terms of how society is going to treat him. So who's going to want to do business with this man? Who's going to want to be associated with this man? Things like the UFC, are they going to exercise their right to contractually cut Connor? Or do they think there's more dollars to be made with him still being affiliated with them? So there's going to be some fallout separate from uh, the money that the court is ordering that he has to pay on the business side of things. But he's not criminally convicted. He's not going to jail for this, but he's going to have to pay money. And he's earned the reputational harm this has caused him. Connor released a statement saying, I will be appealing today's decision. The judge's instruction and the modest award given was for assault, not for aggravated or exemplary damages. I am disappointed that the jury did not hear all the evidence that the DPP reviewed. I am with my family now, focused on my future. Thank you to all my support worldwide. Connor released a statement saying, I will be appealing today's decision. The Meanwhile, an old tweet from Khabib from 2019 is doing the rounds on social media. Khabib had tweeted, Rapist, you are rapist. You are a hypocrite who is not responsible for his actions. Justice will find you. We will see. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Good night.